Hello crocheters, welcome back to Crazy Cool Crochet. In this project we are going to create this amazing, I love this so much, crochet Sherpa wool jacket. And we're not using actual Sherpa wool, of course, we're using Pipsqueak, Burnett Pipsqueak yarn in vanilla. And this is a number five, yep, number five and that will substitute for the actual Sherpa wool. Uh, the jacket itself is just adorable. It's a very boxy shape and it will be lined with the pipsqueak. And you can decide if you want to line the entire thing minus the sleeves. You don't want to line the sleeves because they will then be too tight. Um, but we'll have a really cool Sherpa collar and the Sleeves along the wrist will be lined with the um, Sherpa, I'm calling it. And you can decide, like I said, if you want to line the entire thing or just a couple of panels in the front. Because then when it flips open, then you'll be able to see the pipsqueak that looks like Sherpa wool. It's so beautiful. Now, the instructions are going to be in a size small. Yeah, well, before we get into all that, let me give a little more detail on the uh, materials here. So, in addition to the Burnett Pipsqueak in vanilla, I'm also using Lion Brand Wool Ease. This one is a number four, and the color is Umber, which is a shade of brown. But it's very rich and really pretty. And then um, scissors, yarn needle, and the hook is a K. K is in Kate. K is in cat with a K. <laughs> okay. Okay, that was goofy. Um, or a 6.5 millimeter. And all the detail as far as how much uh, yarn is used and, and uh, sizing, different sizes, will be in the description area below. You've got to click where it says show more or it'll have a little arrow that looks like a little teeny tiny V. It'll be next to the name of the video. Click on that. It opens up a whole section under the video with all kinds of detail that I will put in there. Um, so the dimensions, the sizes, um, all of my social media links. Um, also, you'll be able to go to the written pattern when it's ready, which will be on the blog. Um, and I'll have my Etsy shop links on there also. So open up that description area. And as I always say, watch the entire video before you get started. So this way you'll know what is going to be coming ahead. And as I offer tips along the way, you'll already have those in your head. So do watch the entire video first. All right, before we get started with that foundation roll, I forgot to mention a very important uh, item on the materials list. Uh, we also will need a toggle button. Okay, so this will go um, on the front of the front panel. All right, now we're going to start with a foundation chain of 41 for the size small. And don't forget you're making two panels. Okay, so I like to start my slip knot this way. Hook in front of the yarn, twist the hook all the way around, do your first chain and now you've locked it in down here with the knot. Okay, so you're going to do loosely. You don't want it to be messy loose, but comfortably loose. 41 chains. All right, now the reason we wanted to do that loosely is because we're going to be working in the back loop of that foundation chain. Okay, so we're not entering in the front like we normally would. I'm going to turn this over a little bit and you'll see the loops are popping out where you're going to enter the hook. So it's easier if the chains are a little bit looser. So the first one is right there, you're going to enter into the second one. So the first chain always shrinks up. And let me warn you, the first chain and the last chain are typically the most difficult. So let me see if I can get that in there. There we go. Not so bad. 
And there's that other, next one is popping right out. Now it's really easy to miss a chain when you've got it flipped over like this. So make sure you're counting. When you get to the end, you should have 40 single crochets. And I'll explain why we are doing it this way rather than going into the front, which is a lot easier. Um, this will create basically um, the look of a border. It's nicely finished so that we do not need to add a border at the end. For this design, I didn't want a border. Okay, so if you turn it like that, you can see it's got a nice bottom on there. It's almost like 3D. If we went in through the top, it would just be flat. This way you've got a nice look, finished look. So go all the way across that way, back loop for 40 single crochets for a size small. Now if you're experienced, an experienced crocheter, oh look, see I missed that next one because I'm talking, <laughs> I'm not paying attention. Um, but if you want to work ahead, um, or I shouldn't say that, but if you want to make a different size, a larger size, or even a smaller size, start with a foundation chain in an odd number, and that's all you need to do. You don't need to worry about multipliers. So just add a couple of inches to the foundation chain, and that will widen it for you. And that's it. And then, of course, you'll, you'll probably want to make it longer. Now, this one measures width-wise will be 14 inches. And since we're doing two panels, you might think, well, 14 and 14, 28, that's going to be too wide for a size small. But it's going to overlap. We're at the end of that first row. And make sure you've got the correct count. So for the size small that I'm working here, uh, it's 40 single crochets. Chain one and turn. Now we are going to be working with uh, this really cool center single crochet. And it's also known as waistcoat stitch or the knit stitch. It looks like knit. Let me show you what it's looking like. So the trick to this is to be really super careful where you are entering the hook. That makes every bit of difference. Okay, so let me show you what we're going for here. So we're going to enter the hook inside the heart of the single crochet below, as they call it or it's, it's an upside down V, this is where you're entering the hook, inside that V. Now, as you're working along, it is so easy to get confused where you're entering the hook. The easiest way I have found to keep track of where to enter the hook is to watch for that bar, that little bar right above that V. See it right there? Okay, so you don't want to go under these strands. Let me get started to show you. So the first one we're going to do is that first single crochet. So there's that V, there's the bar. You're going under there. And it helps tremendously to work loosely so that you have enough space to enter that hook. So it's just a regular single crochet. What makes this the center single crochet or the knit look is where you enter the hook below. Okay, so there's the next one. Now look, you can very easily go into there and now you're in the wrong place. 
there's the V, and there's that bar. That's where you're going, inside that V. Single crochet. Okay, right in here. Now these first couple of rows are the most difficult. And it's not difficult, it's just a matter of getting used to where you're entering that hook. But as you go along, as you're building the rows, it becomes much easier. Let me turn this around and show you. Okay, see, so now you've got the, these are much more prominent, you can see them much easier. Okay, so you would be going into that very first one. Watch for that bar. Okay, so you would be going into that very first one. And I'll do this again when we get to the end. I just wanted to show you how, as you're going along, it becomes much more obvious. The V's. Or the upside down V's. Or maybe it's even a tent. A little tent with a little bar at the top. <laughs> Call it what you want. Okay, now let me go back where we were. Okay, so just keep going across and you'll have 40 again, 40 single crochets. There's the bar, so I know that's where I need to enter the hook. There's the bar, there's the V. I probably should have made that row a little bit looser so I could see better, or so you could see better. We're at the end of that row, and I've entered 38, number 38. Now this is where, again, you need to pay attention, and it's better if this was a little bit looser. Uh, so 39, let me get that out of there, is right there. Okay, so there's the V, there's the little bar. It's 39. Now 40 is going to go into that little turning chain. So under those two strands, that's actually your last space. See that? That's number 40. So be super careful when you get to that end. Okay, don't miss that last single crochet and then enter the single crochet into that turning chain or into the space between the turning chain and the last single crochet below. Again, keep count. So if you're at 40, you made it. You're good. Chain one, turn, and repeat. Okay, you are going to continue for 60 rows, six zero. For the size small, this will be 14 inches long for each panel, and they will overlap on top of each other a bit, quite a bit, okay? So that when it flips open, you'll see the Sherpa wool, as I'm calling it, over here. And it will be 18 inches long, up and down. Now, for myself, uh, I'm, obviously I'm making this for myself, so I have a very short torso. Now the jacket is supposed to be short. It will be just below the waist is where it should be landing, um, or just above the hip bone. Um, you can adjust that though to whatever length you want, very simply. Uh, just add more rows. Uh, but again, all that detail will be down in the description area as far as how many rows to do. So the back will also be um, the same boxy shape and sole the sleeves. 
So the whole thing, all in all, is really fairly simple. Okay, now let me show you what we are building here, what we're working toward. So this is the top panel, which overlaps quite a bit on the second panel. And that is so when the jacket is open, it will fall something like this. Of course, this will be the Sherpa side, which we'll get to in a little bit. So we've got the back panel and then the two front panels. And we'll be making two sleeve panels. So there's what that looks like which is identical to the other panels. All the panels are the same, except for the sizing, of course, and I'll get to all of that in just a second. I just want to show you what we're doing. So, of course, we'll need two sleeves, and we'll be attaching the sleeves, something like that, and we will add the toggle before we attach the Sherpa panels. Okay, so the dimensions for all the panels are as follows. For the front panel, you chain 41 for 40 single crochets for a total of 60 rows, six zero. For the back panel, and of course we're making two of those, two of the front panel. The back panel, we chain 59 for 58 single crochets for 60 rows for the sleeves. We need two. We chain 33 for 32 single crochets and 55 rows. Now if the sleeve looks short as you're making it, keep in mind we also have a drop shoulder. So the shoulder will drop down about four inches or so, which will add length to the sleeve, plus we're going to do the cuffs. So the cuffs will fold over, but will of course also add some length. For the Sherpa panels, we are going to make two for the front, one for the back. So for the front, we need to chain 26. Now keep in mind, this is important. You have to work very loosely for all of this. We're going to do 26 chains for the front panel for 25 single crochets and we're doing regular single crochet so that will make it a lot easier. For the back we're going to chain 36 very loosely for 35 single crochets. So for both the front and the back we're going to do 35 rows. Now it is a little bit difficult to count once we do this. So this is what the panel looks like. So trying to count all these fuzzy rows can be difficult. Obviously it can be done. There's one, two, three, <laughs> okay. So it might be easier for you to measure. So measure these panels so that it's just a tiny bit smaller than the main panels. So we need to allow along the edge of the main panel where we're going to seam. Okay, so chain 26 for the front panel loosely. Then we're going to skip the first chain and yeah, I know it's it's difficult to see and then enter your first single into the next chain, regular single crochet. Now you're going to have to feel with your finger where the chains are. So your single crochet into each chain for a total of 25 across the row. Remember to keep it nice and loose. At the end of the row, you've got your 25 single crochets, chain one and turn. 
and then enter your first single crochet into the first space. So we're just doing a regular single crochet, one in each space for 25 across the row. Now take care as you're entering your hook. You'll know when you only went under one strand. You'll, you'll see it very clearly. So make sure you're going under the two strands like you normally would. You won't be able to see it really well, but you'll feel it. So here's 24 and 25. Just shove the hook in there. Chain one turn and continue. Single crochet into each space, starting in the first space for 35 rows. And go ahead and continue. So you'll need two of the front panel and one of the back. Remember for the back, chain 36, 35 single crochets for 35 rows. The next thing we want to do before we attach any of the panels is to attach the toggle. And this is so that we don't need to go through the two layers with the Sherpa. We only want to go through the one layer, make it easier. Now, what I did here was just sewed with a regular needle and thread into these teeny tiny little holes. So I came up from the bottom. This is the right side, of course. So if you're not sure how to determine the right side, it is generally the side where you started. So here is the foundation chain tail. So that's the right side. So position these however you prefer. What I did was put this up against my chest and then look to see where these looked the best as far as the height or how far down to go. So I ended up going down 15 rows, which was the corner of each toggle or whatever this is called the leather patch. Okay, now we're going to attach the Sherpa panel to the front panel. So this is the top. Now you want to situate the panels really close to the edge, but not on the edge. We need to leave the two strands on the end so we can seam the two panels together, the front and the back. And for that we need two strands on the end. So situate the panel, the Sherpa panel, inside the edge just a little bit. Okay, so we're going to use the yarn needle and thread, or yarn, and I attached it here at the corner. All I did was go through both panels. Now avoid going all the way through to the front. Okay, so take a strand on the front panel and go through the two strands on the Sherpa and then come back around Trying to grab two strands so that it's more secure. Now I will admit this is not going to be the prettiest thing you've ever seen. And I'm hoping 
when we make our way around to the front to the side where it will be showing we'll work it out a lot neater okay so I'm gonna keep going well it looks like the fuzzy yarn does cover most of the seam yay <laughs> okay the first panel is lined it's one of the front panels so we kept that edge just a little bit all the way around and what I will suggest now that this first panel is done for myself is when you get to the edges that will be showing so remember this is going to when it's not tied close this can flap open And then this fuzzy side will be showing. Okay, so I suggest that you go through only one strand of the Sherpa panel. The same as the brown panel. One strand. So that it doesn't show nearly as much. So here's the other side. This will be seamed and will not be showing. I went under two strands here and as you can see it really shows up so around the bottom that will be showing around the top a little bit so over here is the shoulder where it will be seamed so that will not show so I went back to the two strands for the Sherpa but along here I only went through one strand I wish you could feel this. It is incredibly soft. Oh, this is going to be so nice and warm. Which reminds me, for those of you who live in a warmer climate, you might want to change up the lining. So rather than line the entire panel and the back panel, you can leave the back panel unlined, and then for the front, only line maybe halfway so that when it flaps open you've got that showing and of course the collar and the cuffs will also still have this for decorative purposes this particular yarn that I used if you again are in a warmer climate and, and you don't want to line the whole entire thing and remember we're not lining the sleeves because that will make them too tight um, but this particular yarn might be too drapey, like not heavy enough to hold the shape of the actual jacket. It might be too drapey. So I suggest using another yarn. So you can actually use Red Heart Soft. And I got this at Michael's. So also a number four and it's uh, the color is toast even though they're both number fours as you know if you're an experienced crocheter that almost doesn't mean anything <laughs> um, so this one does work up a little bit thicker and it's got more of a structure to it so this might be better if you're not going to line the entire thing so go ahead and continue lining the other front panel and the back panel and then we will seam the shoulders and we'll attach the sleeves okay now for this part um, now I'm assuming that you are not beginners I wouldn't think a beginner is going to attempt this project it's not difficult but is you know you can see there's a lot of steps involved so assuming that you are not a beginner I'm going to simply give you the instructions for attaching so we are attaching at the shoulder, starting at the edge, work toward the center for 8 inches on both sides of course, and then bring in your sleeve, position the sleeve along the edge, centered with the shoulder, 
and just use whip stitches, regular old whip stitch with your yarn needle and yarn and then come across here and attach again with the whip stitch both sides okay now fold over your sleeve right sides together wrong side out of course that's what you've been doing all along as far as attachment then you will seam from the bottom up again using the whip stitch and you're going through for all of this just the two strands on each panel so that you're only going through the brown you're, there's no need to go through the lining which is why we left this open when we were attaching the lining okay so just whip stitch all along and then down the arm then we'll come back and add the cuffs sherpa cuffs and the sherpa collar now before we start with the collar I want to offer a suggestion regarding the stress points which would be the shoulders and the underarms for those seams because the garment is going to be on the heavier side we want to reinforce the seams so when you are working on the seam rather than just come through one time go back a second time continue seaming that will give it more stability if you don't do that the weight of the garment will pull on the shoulders and right on the underarm and it will pull the seam open it won't rip it open it will just open it a little bit more so that you're able to see a little bit through it and we don't want that so go ahead and just go over it twice and on the underarms and you'll be good now for the collar and the cuffs we are using the pip squeak again we're going to start with the garment facing you right side facing up and this is the front panel we're going to insert the yarn three inches from the shoulder seam so that's the shoulder there's the seam this is the front panel so three inches from the seam you'll insert your hook and I'm using a smaller hook for the collar and the cuffs because that will offer more stability um, if you use the same larger hook that we've been using which you can do if you don't have a smaller hook available however if you use the larger hook you want to tighten up the tension so even using the smaller hook I'm using an eye or a 5.5 millimeter you want to use a normal tension no more loose tensions on this this will give you a little more stability a little more heft to the collar so it's not real floppy as it would be like the um, panels that we did previously okay so three inches from the edge or from the seam insert the hook bring the yarn through and then chain one that locks it in and then do a single crochet in the same space now all we're going to do is single crochets all the way around until you get back to the other front panel and then you'll work three inches from the seam the shoulder seam at the end of this first row we're going to chain one and turn and now we're going to do an increase on each side simple increases so we're just going to enter two single crochets into the first space that gives us our increase and then one single crochet in each space around until we get back to the end and then we'll do an increase again at the end which is again two single crochets into the last space 
So just keep going. At the end of the second row, we're doing our increase on the last stitch. So you enter two single crochets. And you want to keep count. I didn't give you a count at the beginning because your count might be a little bit different from mine. But my first row was 28 stitches. So now on the second row, I'm at 30 because I increased one on each side. So now we're going to chain one turn and increase again. So just continue those increases on each row. So again, two single crochets in the first space. Then one in each across, and two at the end, chain one turn, increase again on each side. Now the collar is done, and what we did is do the increase rows through row 10. So you increased each row till you get to row 10. And then do two more rows, 11 and 12, will just be even. Whatever count you had at the end of row 10, keep that count for row 11 and 12. So when you do your 11 and 12 rows, just do one single crochet in each stitch. No more increasing. Now, let's go on and do the cuffs. And the cuffs are going to be very straightforward. So just start with the garment front side up, right side up. Insert the hook in the seam. Same as usual, chain one, locks it in. Do your first single crochet in that same space. And we are just working around and around and around. Single crochet one in each space when you get to the end of the row you will slip stitch into that first single crochet chain one turn and keep going around no increasing no nothing just straight single crochets at the end of that first row for the cuff slip stitch into the first single crochet chain one, turn, and now just do a single crochet in the first space and in each space around. And then repeat that process for each row. Okay, cuff is done. 12 rows. And then you flip it over. And that's the finished look. Isn't that gorgeous? And that's it. We're done. Is this not the coolest crochet project ever? <laughs> if I may say so myself, I'm so excited. I love this one. It's so unique and fun. Now, please, if you would like to support my efforts, I would really appreciate if you would subscribe. Click that little red button down below. Click the little bell to be notified when I've got a, a new project out. And don't forget, crazycoolcrochet.com is the blog where I've got a lot more free patterns out there. And a lot of really great information on starting your own crochet business online, just like I do. I hope you enjoyed this. Please look around. I've got so many more videos here on my YouTube channel. Go over to the um, down below where it says Crazy Cool Crochet. Click on that. It will take you to the home screen. However, that's just a, a sampling. If you look up where it says videos, click that and it will open up the entire library of video tutorials, patterns that I've got out there. Okay, I hope you have fun with this. 